that was awkward. Tempest Keep? What am I doing here? This isn't Tempest Keep. Why, you're looking at the inside of the TARDIS. No, I'm amazed that you could survive that little trip through time and space. No way. Are you the doctor? Why, yes I am. I, who has traveled to many worlds and dimensions, have come to this world to see the problems currently plaguing it. You mean, you're here to stop Deathwing and defeat the evil Shaw of Pandaria? No! I am actually here to fix the constant static that's happening on your server. You're really a GM, aren't you? Look, I've been noticing a large spike in disconnections lately, all because of the static. Now, according to my calculations, it seems to occur on the entire server whenever major activity comes from the source. So, someone or something is causing people to disconnect, or warp them to places they can't usually go. That explains earlier, and that one time I fell through Azeroth. Right now, there's too much static occurring where I can let you off. So, make yourself comfy. Don't touch anything while I see what I can do for you. Hey, mind if I use that monitor there? What for? It's for a show I run, and I just remembered I had a request to do. Oh, very well. If you can work a television set, then you know how to work this. Will do! Doctor Who, the ever-going and never-ending TV series that got its start in 1963. Just like Star Wars and Star Trek, it's known for having a cheesy yet expansive universe and storyline that fans today appreciate and love. For me, well, I don't watch it. Though I have seen The Pirate Planet, some stories done by other reviewers, and today I'm looking at a story that was actually requested to me a while back. That story being, Invasion of the Dinosaurs. Now, I'm warning you ahead of time, I know little about the series as a whole, so this is just going to be based on its own merits. After all, if I were to start into a series, I would need an entry point, and this is my second into this series. With that said, let's see how much Doctor Who can entertain me for reals. Who the bloody hell are you talking to? My audience. In there? Are you breaking the fourth wall? Cut it out! We open in jolly old England, but where are the people? Oh my god, the rapture already happened! Ah! Just then the TARDIS arrives, and out comes the third Doctor, played by John Pertwee, and his current companion Sarah Smith, played by Elizabeth Slayton. Essentially, the Doctor is a Time Lord who, if he should die, can regenerate body parts which not only erases his memories, but changes his overall appearance. It's the show's way of changing actors after a certain amount of time. It's not the 19th century or the 21st. My dear Sarah, you are perfectly safe. All we've got to do now is go and find a telephone and ring the Brigadier. I'm not even going to question why the TARDIS, which funny enough looks like a phone booth on the outside, doesn't have its own phone. I'll leave that to any Doctor Who fan who's nerdy enough to post comments about the things I nitpick. In fact... It turns out the town isn't quite deserted, as they find one guy stealing, only to be forced in letting him go. They try to call police, however, just as they get no answer, they hear a loud roar outside. He's dead, Jim. Well, whatever did kill him sure didn't take long clearing out. Anyway, further investigation leads the two to a hideout where after a brief encounter with a gang, they get locked in, only to then meet... <laughs> the 
Look out! A prop! Well, we got our first dinosaur of the story, and wow, it's pretty bad puppetry right there. Of course, the show did have a low budget back then, but still. Meanwhile, we see members of Unit trying to deal with the problem, as well as General Finch from the regular army, saying that he wishes to shoot looters despite the fact that, you know, there are dinosaurs loose. While we're waiting for this doctor of yours, you will obey my orders. You can have your extra patrols, Brigadier. My instructions to them are that any looter who does not surrender immediately will be shot. Just make sure you don't have Jody among your ranks. Hey, come back, you guys. I was only kidding. Raise <laughs> oh, oh! your hands above your head! I'd like to reiterate that even with a low budget, the obviously bad effects are pretty fun to watch, and rarely they actually make the science stuff pretty neat. Otherwise, it's up to your imagination to figure out what effect is what. So the two are taken in on suspicion of looting, though I gotta say, the doctor is certainly optimistic despite being arrested. Hell, his wisecracks are actually pretty funny. Page. You'd never believe me, dearie me. That's very antiquated equipment, isn't it? I think I find that the right is my best side. Now, what about one of both of us? Come and join in. So they learn that military law is in effect because of monsters. But by now we know our dinosaurs and holy crap! That T-Rex just demolished that building! Wait, that's no T-Rex! That's an Allosaurus! You lied to me, Doctor Who! Same as usual. Maybe we ought to try actually shooting instead of just crouching. So Brigadier Lethbridge here learns that the doctor is being held, and because communications are jammed, possibly due to whatever is causing the dinosaurs to appear, decides to head out on his own. Maybe a little too late as the doctor and Sarah are soon to be transported. Thus, the doctor has an idea. We have a fight. Hey, You're the knock, aren't you? It was you what grasped on us. I never grasped in my life! Yes, you did. Come on, on your feet. Come on up. All right, then, you great... Bring it up! Bring it up! What is he, a Vulcan? Let's test it out. But the escape fails anyway, and after turning to color at long last... Seriously, it was kind of hard to make out some stuff. Guess what shows up? Quick, let's leave the prisoners momentarily while we shoot air at the thing. What was it? A Tyrannosaurus Rex. The largest and fiercest predator of all time. Until Jurassic Park 3, when the T-Rex would be royally screwed and thus angering millions of dinosaur fans. They continue to question what's going on and... Okay, who the hell is that? Seriously, who is that and why hasn't the doctor noticed him? Hello, who are you? Back! Back, accursed wizard! Really? You mean you couldn't hide him in a corner? You had to have him in plain sight? If he was hiding, then why set it up to where he was going to attack them right away? I mean, what's the point of standing in near sight if you're just going to run away? <laughs> what the... What happened? He was going to kill you. That was a time, Eddie. For a moment there, time went backwards. This is obviously something that only a Doctor Who fan can figure out, isn't it? I dare say so. After all, it is the first thing to pop up on Google. Why do I feel like it's only going to get more complicated from here? They are then picked up by Brigadier Lethbridge, who informs them that four different dinosaurs have been seen all over central London, thus explaining why it's all empty. They had to evacuate over 8 million people for this. Wait, what? The doctor's already come up with the most interesting theory, sir. He believes these creatures are coming to us from the past. Somebody or something is operating a temporal displacement on a very vast scale. Never mind your scientific gobbledygook. The creatures are being brought from the past into the present, General. 
staying here for a while and then returning to their own time. Rubbish. I take it then that you have a better theory. Yes. Some mad scientist fellow has been secretly breeding these things. So, Tammy and the T-Rex is canon to this series? We have just met a man from the past, a peasant from the age of King John. No, honestly, General, it's true. I'm not staying here for listening to this rubbish. Rubbish? You seem to accept a mad scientist somehow doing it, and you dismiss time traveling as an option? They get a spotting, and the doctor decides to go out and hopefully study it. Before he can, however, it disappears via Time Eddy. They discuss their options when the doctor concludes that someone in the city is causing this, and is somehow producing their own power to make it all happen. And lo and behold, here they are! Generic looking scientists! We must maintain the time transference on schedule. The sequence has been carefully calculated. How can I be expected to work on the main project when I have these constant distractions? Well, these distractions have emptied London for us. We must keep the authorities off balance. Very well, Butler, but it will not be my responsibility if the countdown is delayed. Also, it seems the captain of unit is in league with him. Apparently, it's because of what happened during the Green Death, but anyway... It will be the end of Operation Golden Age. Everything we've planned will be ruined. Very well. If he's such a danger to us, you will have to deal with him. How? Well, you're the soldier. I'll do nothing to harm the Doctor. Nor will I allow him to be harmed. If we descend to that sort of thing, we're no better than the society we intend to replace. Captain Yates, I respect your principles, but if the Doctor succeeds in capturing a dinosaur, then the whole project may be jeopardized. But you know, I came in expecting hammy acting and cheesy action like in The Pirate Planet, but my god, it's so far been boring given the slow pacing. Yeah, yeah, but even then, six episodes of this? When during that time period will things pick up? Oh, don't be so impatient. All good things come in time. Why, I'm willing to bet that once they discover the mastermind and whatnot, you'll have your silly plot. You mean your silly plot? Wasn't around for it, so no. So Professor Whitaker, as he's called, tells Captain Yates to sabotage the stun gun that the Doctor is making so it doesn't interfere with Operation Golden Age. He succeeds in doing so as the gun doesn't respond long enough for one dinosaur to disappear and for the T-Rex to follow. Then through a strange series of events, after the Doctor goes down, Yates decides to save him by undoing what he did. You tried to murder him. You deliberately materialized the savage monster knowing it would attack him. And you'd think he would leave. But nope. He's still loyal to them. Sarah thinks that with Whitaker's disappearance and history as a nut, they think he is responsible. This leads to... more dialogue. The Minister has some information for you, Doctor, about this elusive fellow Whitaker. Have you, sir? I was chairman of the committee that considered his application for a government grant. So you've seen his working papers? Oh, yes, not that I understood them, of course, but my scientific colleagues on the committee assured me that they were utter nonsense. So you don't think that he could be behind what's been happening here? Oh, out of the question. I'm afraid the poor fellow's just a harmless crank. Well, that's not what I've heard. Can something please happen? This isn't exactly that interesting. Oh, hey, it seems Sarah got Finch to let her take photos. Maybe the T-Rex will wake up and... Oh, there we go. Tom, open the door! isn't the kind of cheesy tension I was hoping for. Well, it's still in its early years. Can't really blame them for having this kind of writing. Maybe I'm expecting too much. I'm sure in time something of interest will happen. Like right now, when Sarah is visiting some minister. She's been trying to get herself involved with the plot, so maybe she'll have that chance. You know the Doctor's theory about these materializations? They must need a tremendous energy force. Yes. Well, the doctor said it would have to be something like a nuclear generator. And that started me remembering something. Wasn't there a plan once to build underground quarters for the government in the event of an atomic war? Yes, back in the Cold War days. Oh, I see what you're getting at. 
Oh, I don't think any of them were ever built, you know. Are you sure of that? I was a junior backbencher at the time, but I remember plans were made. Okay, long story short, she's trying to figure out where in London would there be a place to hide a generator capable of producing enough power to do what's going on, which may lead to Whitaker. And shock of all things, the minister is in on the whole thing. Creating monsters in central London. There's a very good reason for it. Which will one day learn. I'm afraid I must leave you. They'll find me, you know. I very much... The heck is going on? Welcome, sister. Who are you? Where am I? My name is Mark. I welcome you to the people. What people? You'll soon remember. Now where is this? The spaceship. Spaceship? Soon we shall arrive on the planet that is to be our new home. Planet? Spaceship? What are you talking about? Hold the phone. What's going on here? When did we go from dinosaurs to outer space? Is this really part of Whittaker's plan? I was expecting a world of dinosaurs, not this. But it did get your attention, yes? Don't you have that static to monitor? Oh, my instruments can keep track of that. Right now, I fancy this. Ugh, I wish I was reviewing Madagascar 2 right now. After enough talking, we find out that Finch is also on the whole plan, as he was the one who let the T-Rex loose. But enough of that, we need the reason to why Sarah is on board a spaceship! Where are we going? I told you to New Earth. A small planet, very much like the Earth we've left behind, but at an earlier stage of development. Still pure. Undefiled by the evil of man's technology. Just the four of us. There are over 200 of us on this ship. They'll all be recovering soon. There are seven ships in all. I call bull crap. It's one thing for Whitaker to do time travel, but how the hell did he get seven working spaceships with people aboard? <laughs> It's got to be fake. Given how it's been three months, shouldn't the doctor be talking like it's been that long? But even then, is this really what Whitaker wants? By somehow involving dinosaurs, he leads a mass of people into the idea that they're going to a new world free from corruption? How the hell is he gonna pull that off? Jeez, the captain's plans from the pirate planet made more sense than this. When will things start to make sense around here? Patience, my boy. You'll have your answer soon. I hope. The doctor tracks one of the scientists to their whereabouts, and after finding his way in, makes his way to the reactor, only to be cut off by Whitaker, who has taken notice. Once back in the elevator, we see how the dinosaurs get to our time period. So it's Wonka Vision they're using. Now it makes sense. Well, except how they can see into the past like that. Oh, screw you! The doctor is attacked and fends off the creature with a mop. Well, that is kind of funny. Hey, don't cut away now! People on Earth were allowed to choose and see what kind of a world they made. Moral degradation, permissiveness, usually. Cheating. Lying. There's also a lot of love and kindness and honesty. You mustn't say such things. I'll say whatever I like. Apparently, choice and emotion has no place here. And when you do have that, you get re-educated. Ever since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, man has continued to pollute the planet which until now has been his only home. Who wrote this? Ted Turner? Through a series of events, the doctor thinks the minister is hiding information about the bunker since not only can he not go back to it, but the butler he saw go into earlier is here too. In order to discredit him, Whitaker calls him to the hangar where the dinosaur was at, saying he was tricked. But we all know the truth. It's a trap! There's your monster maker, Brigadier. You're under arrest. Wait a minute. How the hell could he make those dinosaurs appear? With your own equipment! 
Later, the doctor figures out that Yates is in on things, and is able to convince Sergeant Benton to let him escape. And now for a little demonstration to what Whitaker is trying to do. Soon the doctor and his associates and everyone on this planet except our chosen group will never have existed. As you know, the temporal beam has reached back through time and brought forward objects from the past. Now, by a completely different application of the same basic principle, I am about to reverse time. For the space of a few seconds, I roll back time itself. Just one problem. What happens after you go back in time? How do you plan on explaining to the people that their spaceship crashed underground and quite possibly in London. You didn't think this through, did you? Sarah, after learning the elders would kill her because she doesn't follow them, tries to escape. After learning something, she tells Mark that they are not in space after all, and goes to prove it, thus which he covers for her escape. And what's this? Some actual tension as the doctor tries to escape the army? Well, I'll be! Not too exciting, but hey, at least something other than pure dialogue is occurring. Hello, oh, Tango One. Control here. It's all right, we've got him. You're bringing him in now. He's in, in form all the other units, will you? Over. Roger, Patrol. Congratulations. Clever doctor. Sarah tries to find the brigadier, only to meet Finch. She tries to convince him that the minister is behind this, and even takes him to where the secret bunker was. Only to find out he was involved too. Wah wah. Before I begin trying to wrap things up, I need to show you the one thing that this particular story has shown me that makes it all worth it. Behold, the cheesiest puppet fight between a T-Rex and a Brontosaurus. <laughs> Oh man, that was so stupid. And yet, it was awesome! So the Brigadier captures the Doctor before Finch, and the Doctor is able to convince him that Finch and the Minister are involved in all this. Of course, Yates stops them with a gun, and tells them their plans of rolling back time to where they can make sure the world is a better and non-corruptive place. I didn't know you were back, Captain Jackson. <laughs> Great timing, T-Man! Mark defects to Sarah's side and tries to convince the only few people aboard that everything is a lie. But that doesn't turn out well. We get the Doctor fighting more dinosaurs, the Minister as an astronaut, and one of the Elders defects after overhearing the truth. Also, explosions are fun! <laughs> budget for the win! Sarah finally convinces the people what's going on, they stand up against the minister, the doctor comes in, stuff happens, and, you know, just show them the really cheesy slow-mo effect. Yeah, apparently it comes from being a Time Lord. Through tampering, he ends up reversing the field that time can be reversed, and through the Minister's rashness, sends himself and Whitaker through time. And we all learn something. Greed is evil. Well, um, I was rather thinking of making a trip to Florana. What? Florana. Probably one of the most beautiful planets in the universe. Well, count me out. It's always carpeted with perfumed flowers. I'm not listening. And at seas there is warm milk. And the sands are soft as swans down. No, Doctor. And the streams flow with water. They're clear and the clearest crystal. So, 
what did you think? I could kind of see why people may like this series, but not so much like I did in The Pirate Planet. How so? Well... What about the synchronic feedback checking circuit? What about... Aren't you going to set it? No, 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 I never bother about that. Complete waste of time. The dilation readings there, ah, Mr. Fibbilly. Several storms, Doctor! It is not a toy! What's it for? By the great palate of Hades, you shall pay with the last drop of your blood every cup puzzle. Maybe it's the length of it all, stretched over six episodes, but the pacing in the plot is just way too slow for its own good, often riddled with too much dialogue and not a whole lot of progression. It's like when we do learn the full extent of things, it's like towards the end and by then I felt bored out of my mind. Not to mention the obvious environmental message that's shoehorned in. Barring the quality of the effects, I would have expected the cheesiness to make the really outlandish story entertaining, including the characters. Even the action scenes weren't too exciting. I'm sure it gets better over time, or maybe this just wasn't one of the good episodes of the past, but really, this is not a good way to enter the series. I'm sure fans will have better recommendations, but for me, I'll stick with The Pirate Planet in terms of good entryway into sci-fi cheese. Hold up, I think I'm getting something. Yes, I think I found the source of the static. I'll bring it up now. There. What the... Last. Hold on, I'll reconfigure the settings. He's gone. Suppose you know who he was? No, not anyone I know. Well, whatever the case, the static has diminished. I think it's safe to return you home. What will you do now? I'm going to continue monitoring this and see if anything can be done. Well, maybe I can help. That won't be necessary. I'm sure I can handle things myself. You just go back to doing whatever it is you do. But even then... Have a Jeep? Not a minute, Brigadier. This new car of mine is exactly what I need. Speed is of the essence, you know. Ghost speed racer, ghost speed racer, ghost speed racer, go!